Today in this episode, we are going to explore one of the important topic that every Flutter developer should know about, that is inherited widget. So you may have heard about this so many times, but let's explore how it works and what problems it can solve. So let's get started with the scenario. When your app grows larger and the widgets in the widget tree becomes more complex, so the sharing of the data to the nested child widgets can become a headache. For example, if you have 3, 4 or even 5 widgets nested and there is some data at the top of the widget in the widget tree and you want the same data to be accessed in the 4th or 5th nested widget. So you have to pass it to all of the constructors of the 5 widgets to access it in the 4th or 5th widget and also to the build methods. But that's not sound fun because I just want to get to the top and get that data in my fifth nested child widget. Luckily, we have a widget called inherited widget, which can do exactly the same thing for us without passing the data to the nested five child widgets. When you create this inherited widget at the top of your tree, you can get the reference to it from any widget down the tree. And this is why it's called inherited widget. So now let's see how we can implement this inherited widget. Let's say you have a theme data for your application and you want to access this theme data in all of your widgets down the tree to use the same theme across your application. To achieve this, create a class called theme data widget and extend it with something called inherited widget. Now our inherited widget will hold one parameter. This is the child, which will be required in the constructor of the class. Now override a method update should notify and this method will be called every time when there is change in the inherited data. Now let's provide the theme data to the inherited widget which will be inherited down the tree. Now any descendant widgets can access this theme data in its build method by calling the inherit from widget of exact type. So by passing the type in this method, it tells the Flutter framework to go all above in the widget tree and start from the build context and look for the widget that matches that type. But to make things more easier and simpler, you will also find a static method in the inherited widget, that is the off method, which is doing the same thing which we are trying to achieve with the inherit from widget of exact type method. Now we can replace the code of the long name method in one of our descendant widgets with just this theme data widget dot off context, which looks pretty simple. As a Flutter developer, you may be familiar with something like dot off context because Flutter framework use it in different places like media query dot off context and theme dot off context. So when we do dot off context, we simply means accessing the nearest and closing ancestor widget above the given build context. So in this example, we have the theme data in the nearest and closing ancestor widget above the build context. By doing theme dot off context, we access the visual theme of the application, including colors, typography, and other styles of the application. And by doing the media query dot off context, we access the information about the device screen size, orientation, pixel density, and many others. And all the information we access by doing the media query dot off context, we access this from media query data which is the part of the flutter framework now if you poke into the implementation of the theme we will found the off method inside of return type theme data which is internally searching for the nearest theme data object in the widget tree above the given build context and the same thing will be found in the implementation of the media query but here you need to note one more thing that is the inherited widgets are immutable once they are created cannot be directly changed However, you can update the data it holds by creating the new fresh instance of the inherited widget and placing it higher up in the widget tree. And the fact that when something is final means it cannot be reassigned, but it does not mean that it cannot be changed internally. For example, you can attach a service object to the inherited widgets. This service object can be anything, a database wrapper or any other service provider. This time, our database service object holds its own internal state. Internally, it can do anything, making a call to an API or dealing with other operations of the database. Now, each and every descendant widgets in the widget tree can access our database service object and can call any method to it, create a user, get current UID, and even subscribe to streams and so on. This immutability ensures the inherited widget properties remain consistent throughout the widget tree and prevent any unintended changes 
which could lead to inconsistencies in the UI. To summarize everything, the inherited widgets are very useful when accessing the data from way above in the widget tree in the descendant widgets. And the same thing can be achieved using Block, a state management library or using its subset Qubit. And the same thing can also be achieved using the provider. Now, like always, let's go to the code and understand the inherited widgets more practically. But the example we are going to see will not be of inherited widget, but will be same as the inherited widget where we will be using the block subset qubit. So we have this very simple application. If you have watched my previous videos, you may be familiar with this application. But if you have not watched, this is not going to be a problem because we are going to do everything from scratch. So we have uh, this very simple application where we have a simple action qubit for listening to the changes in the state. And the state in our case is a simple string data which we are accessing it in here. So before going forward and exploring other buttons, let's go to the action stat and we have this simple action stat which extends equitable for value equality. And we have a simple string data in the action stat which is changing on two different buttons that you can see on the screen change one and change two. And in the action qubit we have nothing but a simple change data method which every time when called emits the new stat with the data that we passed as a parameter. So now let's go again to the mandar dart we have this elevated button change one and the other button same elevated button change two which is calling the same change data method for changing the data of the stat which is a simple string. But that's not interesting. The thing we are searching for is here. The provider. You can see we are doing the block provider dot of context using the action qubit. It means we are accessing the action qubit in the nearest enclosing ancestor widget. So do we have the action qubit in the nearest enclosing ancestor widget above the given context, build context? Let's search it in here and yes, we have the block provider, same as the inherited widget. The inherited widget had one child, so it also have one child. And the inherited widget has a theme data as we passed or any service provider. But in our case, we are creating an action qubit to access the method change data from it in our UI. Otherwise, if we do not provide this action qubit, we will not be allowed to access the action qubit down the widget tree. And not only this, as we have provided the action qubit in here. So if we create one more widget in here and call it in our home page, let's say right after this center elevated button. And then inside that widget, we again do block provider dot of context of action qubit and we again call the change data method from it. So yes, it will works because as we have provided the action qubit on top of our widget tree, now we can access this action qubit in any descendant widgets down the tree. So same in the case of the inherited widget. We created the team data and we have provided our inherited widget on top in the widget tree. So now our problem is solved. We can access the same data from the inherited widget using the long name method like the of exit sam type and passing the type or we can use a simple static method of context to access the data from the inherited widget. And sam in this case we have provided the action qubit and now we are able to access it anywhere in the descendant widgets down the tree. So that is what the inherited widgets are and that was the problem it can solve. And if you want to learn more about the build context, so I already have created the video on this topic, so you will find the link in the video description. And also, if you want to know how Flutter works under the hood, I also have created a long detailed video on this topic. So you will also find the link of the video in the video description. So that's it for today and I will see you in the next video.